August 30th, Christopher Todd. The place beyond God's love doesn't exist. At 12 years old, Christopher Todd struggled with conflicting realities. In church, he was taught that God could not remain in the presence of sin, but Christopher had a secret he believed was sin. He was attracted to guys. Through his teens, Christopher lived a double life. He had a girlfriend and privately a boyfriend. He hated his secret, but he didn't know what to do. He even considered suicide. It wasn't safe to talk about this issue at church, so eventually he just quit going. He wondered if God even cared. When Christopher was 19, he went back to church, had a powerful encounter with God, and got baptized. He prayed and prayed that God would take away his attraction to men, but God didn't. At 23, certain God would fulfill his needs through the union, Christopher married a beautiful Christian woman, but his desires for men persisted. And the rules taught at church didn't empower him to change. He was also told whether or not he acted on them, his feelings were just wrong. So he was consumed with shame, condemnation, and failure. Under the pressure, Christopher caved and acted on his desire. His wife's trust shattered like a dropped pane of glass. For more than a year, he worked hard to piece it back together. They attended a spiritual healing program, and Christopher began to have hope. But then the ministry abruptly and harshly fell apart. Confused, Christopher doubted all that he had learned there. As he questioned things, his desire for men grew. Then his dad came for a visit. They attended a Promise Keepers event and had a miraculous healing conversation. Both of them admitted regret and processed forgiveness. But even in a stadium full of Christian men, Christopher fought temptation. Christopher's dad flew back home. In a tragic car accident two days later, he died. Color left Christopher's world. He grieved, battled his desire for men, and wondered where God even was. He felt like Job. How could he trust God when everything hurts so much? He just wanted to be held. His wife held him, but it just didn't help. Lost in the grayscale world, Christopher was done. God had not answered his cries of desperation, so he decided to meet his own needs. Since he believed God could not follow where he was going, he disconnected. Like pushing end on a cell phone, he hung up on God. Christopher chose to engage in anonymous sex with a male partner, but suddenly right there in the dark room, God revealed himself. It was as if the most loving, non-judgmental, compassionate father walked into the room. And in that moment, God's presence shattered the lies Christopher had believed that God wouldn't take care of him, that God did not go into the dark places, that God abandoned him when he sinned. Christopher stood, walked through the door, and stepped outside. When he did, color returned to his world. For years, Christopher's shame had left him in bondage. Now he understood the truth. Romans 8.1 says, There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the sins Christopher had done, was doing, and would do. Forgiveness was a complete package, and God accepted Christopher even in failure. Finally, Christopher had the freedom to move forward. He was empowered to face the battle, love others, and become more like Jesus, whether or not his attraction to men ever changed. Does moral failure make you feel alone, ashamed, and powerless? Or do you hold on to the truth that you are fully forgiven, loved, and accepted? The place beyond God's love does not exist. Hey men, my name is Scott Burrows, and today's challenge actually has two parts. So the first part is to think back in your life, just like Christopher, where you literally needed to experience God walking into the room 
and breaking off, whether it was shame, condemnation, or failure. So think back to a time where you got to experience God doing that and think of how that made you feel. So that is your testimony. The second part of today's challenge is pray and ask God to bring to mind somebody who needs to hear your testimony. Um, this might be a phone call, this might be um, in person, it might be with someone you've never met before and you bump into somebody and Holy Spirit prompts you to share your story with them. So that's the second part where you get to personally share your story where just like Christopher, you got to experience God breaking that off. And I really believe that when you share that story with them, God's going to do something amazing in your heart. So you guys have an awesome day.